committee uh, obviously went with the numbers, and uh, I was on the committee uh, years ago, and that when we sat down the table, things can get very confusing about uh, you know who's who's home, who's away, who's in, and when you go by the numbers, then it just works for everything. That uh, now you can justify uh, you know someone getting in because of the number of wins they had in the top five, ten, using the RPI and the strength of schedule. Uh, where you start varying from those from the formula and what's been given to you by the NCAA, uh, and you change something for one team. Now, you know how do you how do you address that with all the other teams that all of a sudden you're changing the criteria for one team than another? You've spoken a few times about how you, you upgraded the schedule specifically for a moment like this to sort of get a little bit more juice at this time. Do you feel like obviously now that was vindicated as far as you know this is this is what you're shooting for and you got it? Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. We uh, you know we we talked about. Uh, Upgrading the schedule uh, for our RPI in the, in, in the wins, for our strength of schedule, because that's, that's what the manual says. Mm -hmm. So, as, as a coach, you want to know if the, if the committee is ever going to change or use different criteria, you know, if they're going to use wins and losses, uh, whatever, uh, then you're going to want to change your schedule. So, as long as the committee is going by the numbers, that's, that's what we choose to do. You called it pretty much. I mean, it was like, yeah, what happened? <laughs> there you go. Coach, 11 straight years you've been in the NCAA tournament. The way the parity is right now in, in Division One lacrosse, what's that speak for your program? Yeah, I think it's uh, it, it's great for our program. We have very high expectations, though. Uh, you know, with all the uh, success we've had in the past, championships and Final Fours, we've been trying to figure out a way to get there. I thought we had a couple teams in the last 10 years that uh, you know that couldn't got could have got there. And I know in 13 we were in the championship game. Uh, but we have our expectations, and uh, we're just going to keep trucking forward and, and uh, try to keep this program strong. Going back to the, court, to the first Cornell game, what did you feel like they kind of do well as a team? Uh, I thought they did everything well. I thought they played really good defense. Uh, goalie played well. He played well yesterday. He was really terrific. Uh, and I thought that first midfield uh, was strong, you know, with Teat. Uh, at the ball and a stick, they work really hard to get open. The other two attack. We know he went to high school with one of the attackmen, uh, so he looks to 45 really well. Um, I, I thought they were just a strong team from one in the field to the other. I think Teed had like six points in that game. I mean, what's kind of the focus to maybe negate that a little bit? This time? Well, I, I think you've got to limit his opportunities, and uh, you know we haven't been getting as many faceoffs as we. Uh, would like to get, so we're going to have to see how that goes early on and make some changes uh, fairly quickly. Uh, it's a dangerous offense, as we saw on Sunday, and, and you want to limit their opportunities. Looking at faceoffs, a guy on the wing, Peter Gerth, somebody that's been playing a lot of two ways recently. Yeah. Um, with him, I know that he said that he played mostly defense last year, tried to play offense at the beginning of the year, and now mostly back to defense. What's kind of been his importance in this latter half of the season? It's uh, been pretty important, uh, as you mentioned, the, the wing on the face-off, trying to get some possessions so we don't have to double pull up there. If we do lose the face-off, we've got a fairly strong defensive midfielder on the field. Uh, and as we see, he's a, he's a threat going from defense to offense. Got a, couple of, got a goal and a couple of shots this year, got a couple of shots in the, in the game on Saturday, and uh, you can tell he's a very, very strong player. And uh, as a sophomore, he's there, you know, for the future. What does he do defensively that can disrupt other guys? Well, uh, you know, we've been, you know, searching for those guys who are going to step up at, at the short stick position. Uh, you've even seen uh, some of the, you know, Grant and Helmer putting down their long stick to put in a, a short stick there. So we've been searching for that now uh, with him and, and Hutchings and, and, and Dami. Some we, we're starting to get closer. I think Dirth fills in one of those spots. We know we're getting there. Uh, we know we're getting there with Hutchings, and uh, we've got some younger guys that are, are getting better. I, th I think Helmer's been playing well. Uh, didn't have the best game on Saturday, but he, he last three or four games he's been pre playing pretty well with a short stick in his hand. Coach, how have you seen your young team develop over the season uh, as you head into postseason play? It has developed. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, Colgate. Uh, we watched a lot of film of them coming in and thought they were a pretty solid team. A little bit like Syracuse, they got some younger players in spots. Uh, but their defense have been playing pretty good in their goalie. And, uh, you know, I th it was nice that uh, we, we played well on offense and we were stingy defensively. So I think we've gotten better, and, and hopefully Colgate's an indication of that.